Welcome fellow folders and this is part 2 for the Origami Bodybuilder tutorial and in part 2 we're just going to be looking at uh, shaping tips, tricks, uh, examples and um, how to shape this uh, bodybuilder. Now I'm not going to be shaping this in my video, um, I'm just going to be running through some ideas to try and help you figure out how you want to shape it. Now, so you should have obviously the base of the model, which looks like this. I'll basically run through what I did for shaping and then you can, pardon me, of course, um, add your own touches uh, to however you feel like it. So we have the face, the chest, the abdomen, um, the legs, and of course the arms. Now, the only thing that I do not like with this design is the arms are too small because when I was trying to shape mine, no, when you add the muscles, like you puff out some paper, you're basically shrinking the arm by a few units. So when you do something like that, the arm gets smaller by about two, two, two units depending on, on how big you do it, how many you add. So what I wanted to do uh, with mine was Arnold's famous pose where um, it's quite hard to show where he curves round one arm up like that and the other up, up like that. I mean it's uh, I, I, I would include a picture on the screen but I can't because I'm monetizing the video but um, yeah it's the only thing if the arms were twice the length you could add multiple muscles and then get much more unique uh, poses but anyway for the chest is probably the hardest part to shape everything else is near enough in position because the legs are already um, shaped uh, already flat, already here, you can easily round them out, but for the chest what I did was add a mountain fold here and then a valley fold I think we just have a mountain fold on mine they are near enough up here, so from like this point right here and then just down because this is going to help make the chest nice and 3D and there's no exact reference um, maybe I can try it like this see how this turns out this has a reference here but it's just personal preference so it's a 2 by 3 crease we're starting at this point right here and then going across 1, 2, 3 and then down to and then a mountain fold and then you are basically just curving in the paper like that. yes that actually works really nice and then when you do this it uh, puffs out this part and this part here and you want to try and hide these parts as much as you can and of course, um, to make it easier, look up uh, bodybuilders. Um, I looked up Arnold just to try and see exactly how his muscles were to try and help me inspire to shape because my fold was heavily inspired by um, Arnold. So once you get in a rough position like this, you can of course um, perform like swivels. Uh, I don't have my tweezers, so I guess I do. You can just create many swivels if it makes it easier to hide. Oh, bring one to put in place first. Because when you do this, you'll create excess paper on the inside, and it can go any, it can lie anyway. So like that. And let me try and do that. I don't have a sh I probably should have put it on my micro lens to help um, show it. like 
and that causes um, of course the chest to get puffed out in the pecs and then you can just round off the sides and everything that you do after this part is personal preference so already we have a much more rounder uh, pick which is uh, much nicer than the flat here uh, the flat one we have here and then what did I do I think I just rounded because I wasn't liking this part how it sticks out the designers fold had it like this but what part of, the, of, of a bodybuilder has a really pointy shoulder? So what I think I did was just fold it behind either. Um, wait, let me see. Yeah, so basically just hide it. So that already looks much better than having a pointy shoulder. So it's just a matter of folding some paper behind to see how you can get it to look for yourself and try and be happy with it and then we have the parts up here which is the top of the shoulder I can't remember the name of the muscle but what I did was simply use tweezers pull it up because I wanted to try and expand it I wanted to try and make it as round as possible. Bodybuilders have muscles everywhere and they're well defined, they're well round. So I wanted to try and uh, replicate that so I pulled it up and then just folded it behind. Like that. And then, near enough, the same on this side, just pull some up and then try and fold some paper behind. to get a much more defined um, uh, spot here than this where you could just fold it round like that so if you see the difference by pulling it up you have a much more height that can allow you to shape it more if you glue all that perfectly you can fill it up with cotton wool and then round it all out to make it nice puffy and 3D now for the head it's near enough straightforward. Let me just. So, what we're going to do is open up on the back and then we're just going to open up this top part and then make a valley fold like here. It may take a few attempts just to get some sort of reference because we're pushing the paper forward. And again, I'll show it from the back in a second, just to try and get a more human head-like shape. We are just making valley folds at the sides. No, again, no exact reference. You're making the valley folds and then you're pushing this layer forward to uh, bring the face out. So maybe from the back, that helps to see it from this angle. So you can see where these valuables that we made on the front are starting to appear on the back. And that helps to bring the head uh, more puffed out. And then, again, personal preference, the, the bottom of a chin isn't super pointy, so just fold some back. So that is the first one and then you can leave it like that or try and round it off more so let's add two of the sides
probably don't even need the tweezers for, for this part. And this is just using the references for the points that were made when we folded the first part up. And then we're just connecting from here to here. But you can, of course, do it less so it's more round, more chiseled. And then you could even just, once you do those two, you could just fold the edges behind. Again, we're just trying to make it a bit more rounder. We don't want super pointy jaws. Again, that would look perfectly fine as normal. So like that. So it's a bit more rounder. Or you can leave that. You can uh, keep it like that. And again, it's entirely up to you on how you want to design uh, shape. So that is near enough the head done. And for the six pack, I kept it exactly as it is. Um, I didn't want to interfere with the shaping too much by adding extra creases or doing this or doing that because I ghost creased the model. Um, I didn't want to have any unwanted creases if I attempted to add more detail and then I never liked it so I'd have to revert back and then I'd have unwanted creases so I kept it completely neutral and so we have we've done the six pack um, the serratus anterior and the external oblique so the sides we you could again it would help to look at an actual picture of a bodybuilder to see what it's like but you can people have done in the past um, it spreads like these I don't think I'll do it there now again it's all about trying to create layers for more detail again just an example something like that um, to create more edges to create more muscles and more more ways to add detail but again I just kept it simple it's probably good to do a test on this part just to see how uh, what's possible to add for the shaping now the legs again it's pretty straightforward I just rounded this point and this point just a tiny bit Just like that so simple enough and um, they have large thighs pardon me and the legs you are just going to fold up some paper so we have about two units of paper here and you're just going to move about but I don't want it to focus too much on my hands Let's try to determine first of all, is that a good amount for a leg? Yeah, I think that's a fine amount. We'll just go with that. It's maybe a bit less actually. So one and a half units. Try this. And it's just to create a foot. That's all we're doing. So like that. That's basically what I did. And of course you can do whatever else you want, whatever else you see possible. Um, again there's a lot of options to shape. Also I think I folded this part behind. And then I folded it gently in half to try and create that nice separation between the the parts of the leg, so something like that. And then of course the same on all this side. So the arms, um, it's, because they're not massive arms, there's not a massive amount of shaping that could be done in options. So what I simply did was basically decide 
how much paper to curl around. So about half, half them out. And then open up some layers. And then just puff out. Maybe pick one that doesn't have another clean. So open up some layers. And then just pump it like that. Again, there's many ways to probably do this to create muscle. This is just the, the one I did. So when you hold it like that, you have the nice muscle. Again, you could even open up multiple layers to create multiple muscles. If you have paper big enough, that's another option. Maybe just completely push out the layers, maybe add a wee crimp to help round it. Again, not looking for it to be neat and perfect. And then we'll fold the arm back and over like that. That's, that's just doing it uh, really rough. I already have pretty big muscles. So that is another option. Um, and what else? Oh yeah, for glowing wise, I would add, I added wire, uh, two pieces in the leg, so I could help keep it straight and upright. So just a matter of opening up and adding wire in here throughout the model to help uh, connect it and to help keep it straight because when you pose it, you don't want it to uh, go forward. So that wire will help to keep it nice and straight and help um, get the posture and positioning of the shaping that you want. Um, I also glued all the layers on the outside because I was going to fill the body with cotton wool and by gluing all these layers, you, it will allow you to do that. So for the back of the model, I just tucked in one edge over the other because when you collapse it, you have it overlapping like that. So it's taking either this one over that one or that one over this one. We'll go this way. And then the same with this one. We're just tucking the flaps over one another. And once you have it nice and neat, I glued it all to hold it all in place. And then I could then open it up, create a pocket. And because I have glued all the layers on the sides, I would puff out nice and neatly to help get that nice round shape. And then I would fill the model with cotton wool, the entire model from top to bottom with cotton wool even in the legs because I had created pockets by gluing these two layers shut. So this layer and this layer which creates a pocket which I can then puff out, fill with cotton wool and then wrap the excess paper around it to keep it nice and round. Um, and yeah that is it. Hopefully, oh yeah the V as well. So we're just making a gentle, when you curve the body, like this, when you curve it around, you want to add uh, a gentle valley fold from here to here. Probably easier just to do it on this side. And I'll just put here as well. This, uh, doing this would be the last thing. Once everything is glued, all the wire is added. Of course, you add wire in the arms as well, because if I uh, glue it like that, it's just going to come undone. So if I fully enforce it with wire, I can keep the positioning to however I want. So once you do that, you can just curve it and then decide um, on what type of po uh, positioning you want. So that really does help flat trees. And it defines it much more. 
Now, that is everything that I have showed you. You can, of course, apply any more shaping that you would like to your model. I'll just quickly show you mine. So here we have it here. And the creases for the chest and the part that I folded over. So what did I do? So it was originally like that. That's how the designers was, but when I looked at the, the designers, pardon me, I realised I don't like having this big part sticking out. It doesn't look good, personally. So I just folded it behind. And then the parts here, just pulling it up and rounding it over. And then the head, just those creases that I had showed. the V, the round uh, thighs, and then the legs. And then the back has been all glued and attached and filled with cotton wool to help give that nice 3D um, look rather than having it flat. So I'd much prefer to have this than this, so it took me a while to figure out how to achieve this. And then with the abs, um, again, I just kept it really simple. I didn't want it mess up too much or interfere. Again, you could technically uh, split these abs to have like an eight pack, even do it more if you want. And then again, just the arms. Just puffed out some paper to create some sort of muscle. And yeah, that is it. Hopefully you manage to shape the model and if you do, make sure to let me know uh, somehow. Send me a picture, tag me somewhere so I can see your fold. And that is it everyone, thank you all for watching. I need to go and um, Camille is sending me the 4.0 crease pattern any minute.